So, Kevin, now that it's official and this measure is going to be on the ballot in May, let's help Denver voters understand what they're voting for or against. This is an effort to decriminalize psilocybin mushrooms in Denver, not legalize yep. psilocybin mushrooms. What's the difference? So the difference is a, a regulatory framework. If we're talking about a um, recreational or, or medical model, uh, that involves state oversight. And what we're working to do simply is to um, decriminalize the personal possession and personal use of psilocybin mushrooms in Denver. So what happens if a police officer finds someone with mushrooms on them? So that uh, right now psilocybin mushrooms are if we succeed in May, will be the lowest law enforcement priority. And uh, the city and county of Denver uh, cannot use any funds or resources to prosecute individuals who are in possession. So, so people definitely have some preconceived notions about what mushrooms are and what they do. Uh, a lot of people think it's, it's for hippies. Who's taking psilocybin? Who's using this stuff? You know, when we were, camp when we were uh, collecting signatures, we ran across a lot of individuals who said that this is the only thing that works for their depression, the only thing that works for their cluster headaches. Uh, we had a few people who said that this is the, um, that psilocybin saved their marriage. And so these are everyday people um, in Denver, in Colorado, and across the country who are currently utilizing psilocybin as an alternative um, to treat some of their mental health and um, addiction issues. And there's science to point to the efficacy of psilocybin. That's correct. What kind of research do you point to most or uh, do, do you share the most in terms of what, what's what it's capable of? Yeah, so um, with our campaign, we're focusing on, uh, there was a, an association study that showed that individuals who'd used psilocybin in the past are less likely to use opioids and less likely to um, develop, develop an addiction from opioids. Um, additionally, psilocybin mushrooms have been proved to, they, they've been proved to help individuals who have uh, chronic depression and also anxiety. And so one study in, in particular, back in 2014, showed that individuals, individuals who use psilocybin and who had a, uh, a chronic terminal illness or a life-threatening disease, when they used psilocybin as a treatment alternative to treat their anxiety, um, it was not only the most profound spiritual experience they'd ever had in their entire lives, but they were no longer afraid of their terminal illness and were ready to, to face the circumstances of, of the disease they had. I mean, there are organi organizations, there are organizations and research institutes, Johns Hopkins, the FDA is looking at this in a different light these days. How are we going to, how are you going to start changing the culture and the stigma associated with this drug? Yeah. So a, a big responsibility with our campaign, now that we've made the ballot and Denver residents will vote on this in May, is that we have an opportunity to educate the people of Denver and spread truth through research. And not only research, the clinical evidence that shows that psilocybin mushrooms are, that, <laughs> that they have a medical value, um, and primarily that, the, that they're uh, non-addictive and safe, safe uh, physically safe, uh, but also looking at a lot of this anecdotal evidence what are these personal stories that people are sharing about how mushrooms have changed their lives for the better? And as a campaign, we intend to share those stories along with the clinical research and um, allow the people of Denver to have the right information to make the best decision in May. So let's say you get what you want and psilocybin mushrooms are decriminalized in May. Sure. Then what? What's next? <laughs> uh, I mean, are we talking about just like marijuana, we have psilocybin shops all over the city of Denver. Is, is that where we're headed? I don't think that's where we're heading now. And I want to emphasize that as a campaign and personally, we're very focused on decriminalization in Denver. Um, a part of our language includes the formation of a policy review panel for psilocybin mushrooms. 
uh, which will be composed of members of city council, um, Denver city attorneys, health professionals, um, and also members of our organization so that we can look at the impact of decrim in Denver and take a look at what the next steps are. So, so in speaking with, with experts in this field, they say, generally speaking, most people don't have any kind of major problems or concerning side effects, but say that there is significantly more uh, uh, psychological dangers associated with this compared to cannabis. Do you worry about the impact this might have on the community? So to that point, um, a 2017 study by the Global Drug Survey showed that psilocybin mushrooms is the safest of all recreational drugs. Um, even safer than cannabis. And so individuals who may experience um, symptoms or, or, or have an experience that may not be positive, um, our job with our campaign is to make sure that we're educating people on the right use and, and the right way to use this substance so that it provides the most benefit. Can it be abused, and do you worry about it being abused? It cannot be abused. Um, it's shown that psilocybin is not physically addictive, and it's also safe for human consumption. And so in terms of the abuse, if we're looking at, at mental health, um, there are contraindications, and those contraindications, um, as they're indicated, are, are a very small percentage of the population, which is why it's important to establish um, a paradigm that encourages how to properly use these substances. Um, last question here. I reached out to the mayor's office today, okay. and as you know, Mayor Hancock has said and is standing by, he, he does not plan to support this measure. Sure. And he said previously in an interview with Nine News that he worries about the image of Denver being one of a, a drug culture. What kind of message do you think this initiative making the ballot sends to the rest of the country? Absolutely. So. Denver has an incredible opportunity right now. We have a mental health and addiction crisis that law enforcement and medical practitioners don't have the resources to solve. Um, according to the clinical evidence with psilocybin, this is something that can be used to treat a multitude of varying conditions from depression to addiction to certain substances like opioids and alcohol and tobacco. And this is an opportunity for Denver to lead the nation in establishing a framework that encourages more research, that, that prevents individuals from being criminalized for a substance that occurs naturally and has medical benefits. Um, and I couldn't be more excited, and I'm sure our, our team couldn't be more excited to be able to speak with the people of Denver um, and work with the city to share the good news about psilocybin. Kevin Matthews with Decriminalized Denver, thanks for your time. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks. Thanks.